Ooh, quiz five. What's that about? Okay, geobotany, ferns, asters and twigs. Sounds great. Oh, this poem that Raymond wrote about Viteria. Little ribbons on the rock. Can you tell me what's the clock? How long ago did you come here and hide among these rocks in fear? Let's find out what Ray asked about and what the answers were. So he wrote about the Appalachian gametophyte, which is a fern that only exists as a gametophyte. It doesn't produce gametangia, doesn't lead to the development of sporophytes. It reproduces asexually by little filiform gemmy. When we saw that, quote, unquote, on their field trip to um, deep woods in the Hocking Hills, and it um, basically clones by breaking apart, by fragmenting. And Cranville says, you were quite large, near big as me. You perched and hung and lived full free. With creeping roots upon big trees, your shoestring leaves our eyes did please. Um, what he's referring to is the fact that it's been determined that this plant, the Appalachian gametophyte, is very closely related to a kind of a fern called a shoestring fern. It's a tree that, fern that lives on trees with very shoestring-like leaves. And so this is... Um, kind of like the gametophyte of a, of a fern type that's sort of well-known, um, closely related to it anyway. And what happened? Clan Cranfell asks, so what went wrong? Why did you flee? Why didn't you turn your back upon the trees? Were there ice sheets, big floods galore? Or was it adulting you deplored? Huh. And basically, um, the researchers in, well, let's try to say their name, Pinson and Schildpels, tried to, I mean, um, determine that the, uh, the Appalachian gametophyte is genetically uniform, but has a pretty wide range. Um, but it only exists in unglaciated areas, even though, by the way, um, there are some f formerly glaciated places where the conditions are right for it. Um, so the jemmy can't disperse very, very far. So it seems that it, w w and, and, before the glacial times, well before the glacial times, the conditions were fine for the sporophyte to grow, and it was a regular fern with an alternation of generations life cycle. But when the glaciation occurred, even though this area where it occurs wasn't glaciated, it was freaking cold, I bet, too cold for a tropical fern. And so um, the sporophytes couldn't persist, but the gametophyte managed to be able to persist in sheltered little niches and in interstices and in uh, sandstone rock overhangs where it lives to this day reproducing asexually huh. uh, homosporous heterosporous um, the, this is a distinction among um, plants homosporous plants produce one type of spore that typically germinates into a bisexual gametophyte this is the type of um, life cycle that all bryophytes have, and most ferns, um, some lycophytes, and no seed plants. Um, some ferns, some lycophytes, and all seed plants are heterosporous, producing two types of spores, microspores that germinate into male gametophytes, and megaspores that germinate into female gametophytes. And um, this picture here shows on the left a club moss, which has sporangia that are all uniform. It's a type of lycophyte. And on the right is a spike moss, which shows down below with those big spores in there, megaspores. And the upper ones, and the upper leaf axils, microspores. And we learned about geobotany. Um, we learned, well, simply stated, um, eastern Ohio is underlain by sandstone, and it's... Um, uh, kind of resistant to erosion, except in um, uh, some places where it's um, uh, not protected by sandstone, so it wore away. So we have deep ravines and, and very dissected landscape uh, of hills that are capped with sandstone. In western Ohio, erosion flattened the landscape, and it's... Um, underlain by calcareous material, sort of like limestone or something that is basically um, alkaline in pH. And there are some plants that have nice characteristic uh, uh, distributions. So for example, in limey substrates, red bud, red cedar, fragrant sumac and hackberry and blue ash and chinkapin oak 
Um, in eastern Ohio, in the sandstony places, we have chestnut oak, which, by the way, looks an awful lot like chinkapin oak. Um, an, interest, an interesting tree in the Heath family called sourwood. A bunch of pines. And some interesting shrubs, some evergreen shrubs like mountain laurel. Some species have determinants that aren't exactly that uh, substrate, but some geologic history. So here's uh, the distribution of sweet um, buckeye. Sweet buckeye is only found south of the glacial border, um, whereas Ohio buckeye is more widely distributed, including north of the glacial border, and it probably um, wasn't able to disperse after the glaciers left. Hemlock, on the other hand, occurs both north and south of the glacial border, suggesting that its distribution is more related to the site conditions. Cool ravines, sort of north-facing, um, that sort of re re retain the boreal conditions. And finally, in eastern Ohio, um, in the sandstone area, in s restricted locations, we have this big evergreen shrub with large leaves called rhododendron. And it's the distribution of rhododendron tracks fairly closely with the distribution of an ancient river system called the Tays River. So it's believed that it's um, um, occurred along that river system and its distribution mirrors where the river system was, rhododendron. And we learned some things about twigs. This is, uh, ah, this is so beautiful. I love black walnut. It's black walnut. Look at that monkey faced leaf scar with those big three bundle scars. Look at that true terminal bud pointing forward and be still my heart, chambered pith. Wow, this almost looks like a thorn, but it's not. It's a long, narrow bud, very characteristic of American beech and um, a little line that extends from the bud, excuse me, extends from the leaf scar um, go around the twig. And that's where when there was a leaf there, and the, when it was very young, it had a stipule that was attached to the twig, and that's called a stipule scar. This twig, this big fat twig with the huge shield-shaped leaf scars is Tree of Heaven. And Tree of Heaven has a false terminal bud. Um, the bud that's nearest the tip is just another lateral bud, and at the end of the growing season, the twig dies back, leaving a scar that's called a tip scar. And that's what C is pointing to. It's uh, that tip scar. Sometimes, yeah, tip scar. Ah, this is even beautiful er than that other thing that was beautiful, that black walnut. This is tulip tree. Tulip tree has a true terminal bud with, with scales that, that meet at the edges. They kind of look like tulips. Kind of looks like a duck's beak. Quack, quack. And um, has a nice stipule scar going all around the twig, these round, round leaf scars. And those little, those little scars, those little pits inside the leaf scar are bundle scars. They're vascular tissue scars. They're the, where the veins of the leaf connected with the twig. And we learned about the Asteraceae. Um, this particular one is called wing stem. And the inset shows a picture with the winged stem. And its capitulum type is Radiate. It's got ray flowers and disc flowers. Ah, this is um, chicory. And chicory. Is that Bombus perplexens? Or is that a fly? Uh, is a um, member of the Aster AC that has a ligulate capitulum. All those flowers are. Um, strap shaped. They're all perfect, having both male and female parts. A lot of pollen there. And that is chicory with a ligulate capitulum. This is a pile wart or American fireweed. It probably self pollinates. This has a discoid capitulum. Um, the flowers packed in there that you can't really see because they're covered up by the filaries. Um, but there are no strap shaped ones. So it's a, it's a discoid capitulum. And this is. Um, a type of goldenrod. Goldenrods have small uh, flowers with, excuse me, small capitula, you knew that, with um, radiate capitulum type. This is Solidago nemoralis, a gray goldenrod. Ooh, ooh. 
and um, again, uh, the asterase E flower structure with an inferior ovary with the, with the sepals modified so much that they get a special name. It's called the pappus. The corolla, which is radially symmetric in the disc flowers and strap-shaped, zygomorphic in the ray flowers. Stamens fused into a tube. Styles grow through it. And um, it, the, this is an inflorescence surrounded by involucral bracts, which are um, called fillaries.